morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, Professor Amaguchi, thank you also for your kind words. And I'm, I'm sure that you enjoyed the, the evening last night and that you will have a great time in the days ahead because uh, uh, we share a very strong commitment together and um, the people of this town and of this area are great people and you will like them. We are a keen participant as a university in AC21. We are proud to host the Consortium 7th, 7th International Forum, uh, the first meeting of its kind in Africa. Now, you know archaeologists and ge geneticists tell us that uh, you are now at the birthplace of all humanity. Uh, and that somehow your roots are here, somehow you are connected here, somehow, somewhere in your own life, uh, you have come to your birthplace. So welcome to your birthplace. The, um, we certainly look forward to making the most of your visit with us. But you've also come at a great time in Africa because the African lion is waking from its slumber of many, many years. And it is waking up socially, it's waking up politically, it's waking up economically. And it is becoming a challenge to the tigers and the kangaroos and the dinosaurs uh, for its rightful place in the sun. Now, uh, in a way, we, we suddenly find all these economies as global uh, economies in this great zoo wanting to create a better world. And we all know that a better world can only be done when there is true, great science behind it. So uh, while this is the first one in Africa, it is also a very opportune time to have AC21 here, to get a feel of this continent and to get an understanding of what it means for us all to seek ways to overcome the divisions of the past, to seek our communalities, uh, and therefore create networks that help us play our role well in different parts of the world in the interest of humanity, the world, and all living organs, and also the planet. And we can do it through promoting understanding, through encouraging shared values, through generating the knowledge required to improve the quality of life uh, in all societies. If we manage to do that, the academic consortium for the 21st century would have left a true legacy. If we managed to do that, we would have turned people who are in despair to begin to feel the reality of hope. I use the word hope quite deliberately. Uh, now, there are very many people who misunderstand me when I use it. They think I'm using it as a theological term. And I use it as a secular term. A secular term that has to do with people feeling that there is a future. That there is a future that is better than their present and better than their past. And the role of education in creating that feeling, creating that opportunities, and creating that space of a better future is significant. So it's not the kind of empty optimism. It's also not the kind of things that you just have to believe and hope for, but it is about the strength and the power of education, the strength and the power of the sciences to create a future that is better than today.
And it is about beginning to take your cue from that future instead of from that past or from this present. The kind of hope that does not simply accept current reality and begins with that, but assumes that another and better reality can be created by creating, applying, and sharing new knowledge. Now, uh, through scientific thinking, we create critical questions. We look at problems in a scientific manner, and we use the sciences to create that future that we all see and that we know becomes the next generation. In this way, hope becomes a radical concept, radical because it wants to transform life, not accept it as it is. That is our historic mission, to change the world through knowledge. And how do we do that? Now, uh, I must also use a quote from President Nelson Mandela. He said, the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world is education. Now, you must remember the context of his use of the word weapon. Now, those of you who know about Mandela's life in the 60s, that was the time when he decided to start the, the armed wing of the ANC. And he did that, and he explained that in the court when he was sentenced. He said that, I started Mkonto West Caesar as the armed wing of the ANC because I knew that the anger of the young people was going to spill over unless it is organized, unless it is focused, unless it is disciplined. And so he did that. And then when he came out of jail and started his the democracy, he made this point. He said, but the best weapon, the best weapon is education. He's, he used all, all the other weapons and he tested them and he knew what was the best. And that, I think, is a very profound thing to remember about his life. Universities produce knowledge for the public good through research addressing urgent needs and questions and by delivering graduates able to participate fully in the global knowledge economy. But development is, a, is an elusive word. Uh, and it... We know that, we know that, and when we begin to look at the question of the Millennium Development Goals, we knew that everybody knew at some point in time that it was possible that we had the possibility in this world, economically, politically, and otherwise, to make poverty history. And in a certain sense, we have lost it. As we look again and we see that next day is coming and we're still struggling with the deep questions of whether we have created a development platform that is sustainable. So we are talking a lot everywhere about the issues of sustainable development goals and we must continue this discuss discussion also in AC21. While progress has been encouraging in some areas around us in Southern Africa, millions of our fellow human beings still lag behind on crucial indicators. A person can almost say, that if you use the Mandela's thoughts about freedom, he said, it's a long road to freedom, but one could also say there's a long road to development. It is taking much longer than we thought, and it is harder than we thought, but it is still an important future to work for. And universities have a vital role in this development agenda. That much the founders of the consortium agreed upon in 2002, when the first international network took place at Nagoya University in Japan. They said, and I want to quote, in an era of continuous change, we believe that institutions of higher education must take the initiative in responding to the rapid transforming needs of society. And they said further that they believe the optimum means to accomplish this would be an international university network. 
because it would have, and I quote again, a common pool of knowledge, expertise, and experience. And so the Academic Consortium for the 21st century was born. Now, if you fast forward to, fast forward 12 years, and here we are, a network of 19 leading universities on, five, on a number of continents, and uh, united in our conviction that we need to work together to meet the needs of society in a time of rapid changes across the globe. And here we are in Africa, so it would be appropriate to bring in a bit of indigenous wisdom. Now, there's a traditional African saying that goes like this, if you want to walk fast, walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk together. The road to development stretches out ahead of us, so walking together is the only way to go. But wait a minute, surely collaboration in higher education is nothing new, we all know about that. And that is right, universities have for a long time been concluding agreements of various kinds with each other, bilateral agreements and multilateral agreements. And more recently we have seen the rise of multiple partner networks. These are often organized around a jointly administered educational program and sometimes also encompasses joint research on specific themes with societal and developmental relevance. At Stellenbosch, this has guided our internationalization strategy in the direction of knowledge partnerships. However, what I want to do this morning is to include, introduce an even sharper focus, the idea of collective impact. We have, uh, uh, as a university, we have looked at a number of issues that we want to drive over the next in one with is to begin to look at how, what, social impact we're having and to be able to measure that. This approach recognizes that social problems have multiple causes and multiple solutions, that these are actually interrelated and interdependent. They cannot be addressed in an uncoordinated fashion and they also need overarching plans, continued efforts within the context of these partnerships. Now, as recently as last month, we launched two new networks that we are involved in that give expression to this notion of collective impact. Hope at Africa, uh, and you have met some of our partners that are here, and also Hope International, we, will, we started to look at the work on. Hope at Africa is a collective between Stellenbosch, and six other African universities for now. Botswana, Dar es Salaam, Makerere, Malawi, Nairobi, and Namibia. And in Hope International, we started to work with the four Swedish universities. And in both cases, these are the founding partners, and the expansion is probably likely. The two initiatives are related, and synergies between them will be exploited. But what, is, but what is it that makes them with these partnerships for collective impact so important to us? And, and there is a single simple reason, and that is the focus on a single vision, focus on joint approaches, the focus on a common agenda, and a straight platform on which universities meet as equals. Through Hope at Africa, African universities are going to combine their ICT platforms to leapfrog brick and mortar restrictions to learning and teaching. And through Hope International, we aim to build global consensus around universities doing science for society. It is early days still, but we aim to follow a joint approach and execute agreed upon actions because we believe that is the best way for partners sharing a single vision to pursue their common agenda. That is, the, that is the logic of this collective impact. That is how you ensure that the time you spend along the long road together is used to maximum effect by achieving the development you desire. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my call to this international forum 
and to the General Assembly meeting tomorrow afternoon is this, let us infuse AC21 with the spirit of collective impact for a future that brings more hope than despair. And that is how we will change the world because we still have the best weapon. Thank you.